Today, we're retiring Zlatan in career mode and waiting for his regen to spawn in game to see how his career pans out. Can he become better than the Swedish king himself in his prime? Is the sequel going to outperform the original? Lions, they don't compare themselves with humans. <laughs> One of the most unique players of this generation. He told us a few years back, as a footballer, you are 10 out of 10. What about now? 11 out of 10. He was special, the streets won't forget as he's called it a day on the beautiful game, hanging up the boots at the age of 40 in a depressing farewell at the San Siro. The tears were flowing that night and they still are today as it provided us with some fresh reaction memes. Nevertheless, we've made it official, forcing him into retirement this season. The generational talent is having one last dance and now all that is left to do, just get the campaign over and done with. Just sit tight and wait for the next Ebra prodigy to generate in-game. I didn't touch the team whatsoever, I just simulated through the calendar and these lads have been able to give Ibra the ultimate send off, being invincible, winning a Scudetto, going back to back in the Serie A and overthrowing Juventus, he's going out a champion and again in the Super Cup getting the better over their cross down rivals Inter in a 4-3 penalties win. It was nearly the domestic treble but they were knocked out in the quarterfinals to Atalanta 4-1 and the Champions League run was short lived in the group stages being relegated to the Europa League. Yeah, I don't believe it either, as in the round of 16, note the quarterfinals, they were eliminated to Barcelona 4-3 on aggregate. And we'll take a look at his final professional stint. How did he get along? Was he the top goal scorer? And no, he was actually quite far down the pecking order. Despite 52 appearances, he got eight goals, seven in the league, one in the Europa League, and the king, the lion himself, Zlatan, is being sent off with a 12 million pound valuation, 41 years of age. He's maintained that 81 overall and goes out on a high. Now we've entered season two, it's our journey, it's our mission to find this regen of Ebra. And here are the current search filters we've applied. We're looking for someone 16 to 21, a striker, of course from Sweden. And usually down here you'd put the league they retire in, so Serie A. But honestly, if this doesn't work, he could be languishing in the free agents. And that's exactly the case here because it's not Joel Person. He's probably ended up in the free agents, so let's go find him there. And here he is, Alexander Hansen. And it looks like we've got a character on our hands, people. The 18-year-old striker, 5 foot 11, and it looks like he's got some Dr. Dre beats on. Like, what's he bumping in those headphones? I've never seen anything like it. He's got white flowing hair, rocking a little beard as well. Let's dive into his actual traits, attributes, and stats, and all that good stuff. With three-star school moves, three-star weak foot, he's right-footed, weighing in at 165 pounds, medium attack and work rate, low defensive, and he's got the power header trait. He's got that rage bull energy about him and his best actual attribute is actually sprint speed at 82 80 acceleration a couple of light greens sprinkled in across ball control finishing shot power and penalties all up there he's still only a teenager searching for a club so let's see on the free market where the next Debra Alexander Hansen ends up this man is moving at god speed it's only taken him a couple months one transfer window to find a new home or to find his first home he's been signed by Santos over in the Brazilian Serie A. For those of you who need extra confirmation to really wonder why, how is he even Zlatan's regen, the main telling point and what you need to look for is actually their date of birth. So when you go into edit player, click on their profile, scroll down to their info, and they should have the exact same birthday date as the retired player. And October 3rd, 1981 was Zlatan's birthday, the OG himself. So that's how you know he is in fact the real thing. He's got the BCHD authentication series of approval so let's get simming and see how he kicks on at Santos. I know it's only season one but it doesn't look like Ibra's regen is getting a taste of silverware anytime soon here in the Brazilian Serie A as Santos finished mid-table fodder in 12th and had no shot at the Super Copa. He's playing all alone in a pretty attacking formation at Santos. Being the one and only striker he has Angelo Gabriel to the right hand side of him. He's been linked with a 20 million pound move to Chelsea. Santos have got a pretty capable team. They produce Neymar, Pele, and countless other Brazilian legends as Alexander the Great is showing great potential. He only grew a plus one this season. His game time and performances were extremely limited to six appearances, four goals and one assist in the meantime with an average match rating of 7.43. His game time was chewed up by the Nigerian Tedem Moffi. This one's my bad because I actually didn't even put a development plan on him this season. So he was just working on balance the whole time.
whole time, just improving everything about his general game. I've also installed the mod that lets us have two more development plans, and those include Roadrunner and Gunner. So we've got a few more options to play around with this time. For the beginning of Season 2, I just want to have him on Poacher to improve his attacking work rate. As financially, he is valued at £8 million on the transfer market. Those headphones not adding to his marketability as he experienced a 39% drop. Look, I'm not a thousand percent sure with how the Brazilian Serie A calendar works, but we're in December 2024, so midway through the European season, and campaign number two for Ibra's regen has subsided, and he has seen Santos go from 12th to 3rd in a meteoric rise up the table, only losing out the championship to Botafogo by two points, which is just heartbreaking. I'm certain he's guided them to qualification for the Copa Libertadores, which is like the Champions League of South America. The only striker at the club, Hansen, was able to go up to a 78 overall with a cheeky plus four. He's not happy with his contract as he currently has a 37 million pound release clause installed. He's still showing great potential in excellent form and this time around he played every single game in the league with 15 goals and six assists. He has gotten his career up and running hitting 20 years of age, 21 goal contributions and his average match rating has stayed consistent as ever, 7.89 which is even better than last time out. He now has a high attack and work rate, pretty much all of his physical attributes are in the greens. He's on the come up and he's on the verge of transforming into a Swedish powerhouse now with a market valuation of 18 million pounds, seeing a 24% rise. Let's see if anyone activates that release clause. Is he up for a big money move to Europe or abroad? Let's find out. I just want to let it be known that we are living in a world where Christopher Nkunku in December of 2024 can win the Ballon d'Or, so anything is possible. I've never seen anything like it in career mode. Usually it's always Mbappe or Haaland who have the award on lock. For Alex's own sake in career progression, he's conquered South America. He's now been upgraded for season three to an exciting prospect and I am putting him on the transfer list. I want him to be out there on the market and see what kind of offers it can attract. In his development plan this season, I want to experiment with one of the new ones and that is going to be Gunner. The breaking news has been released and it's a PSV masterstroke as the Dutch have activated Hansen's release clause. Boy, the young Viking is bound for the Eredivisie. He's actually following in the footsteps of Ibra as Zlatan played for Ajax in the early days of his career after he moved from his hometown club Malmo. There's your little update as we wave goodbye to the Santos colours. It's official, £37 million. Alex the Great makes his first big European move and hopefully the first of many. The new number 29 for the Dutch champions. He is set to do some damage and score goals for fun, believe you me. Going from Captain De Jong up top to the next Ibrahimovic. They're looking like dead set title contenders in my view, making a push for the number one spot as with 18 games played, they're currently sitting on top of the tree with 47 points. So let's see how Hansen gets on in his first stint in Europe. With three years deep and Hansen has gotten his hands on his first piece of silverware, winning the Eredivisie, coming through the second half of the season, 84 points. He has now become a Dutch champion. Unfortunately, couldn't take home the Dutch Cup though, losing out in round two to the eventual champions Ajax. However, got his first taste of continental football as PSV were already knocked out of the Champions League. They were relegated to the preliminary rounds in the Europa League where they ended up reaching the quarterfinals losing to Marseille 4-3 on aggregate. So it's a pretty commendable European adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, he is him. He has completely revolutionized this squad, just taking over that striker position, beating out all the competition he had in front of him and has now grown a plus two overall. Still hasn't even turned 21 yet and he's looking like a generational talent. He's living up to Ibra's legacy as in half a season, 15 games, he managed to find the back of the net seven times, one assist, eight goal contributions in all competitions. The new gunner development plan worked its magic perfectly as our headphone wearing menace worked hard off the pitch to prove himself here in the era of EC as his market valuation has rocketed up 35% standing at a 36 million pound market value. We've let the kid cook on gunner for quite some time now so the start of season four july 2025 we're going to shake some things up and put him on complete striker we are in desperate need for some passing and dribbling attributes to be upgraded and for a five-star weak foot it's a world cup year and the 2026 world cup is upon us his current competition and the two players setting the benchmark for the national team alexander isaac and goda let's see if our guy can show the selectors and the sweden manager what he's made of the plan is we're going to keep him here at psv for at least one more season. I want a full campaign for him.
frame in the era of AZ. So we're just gonna have to let the Scots down easy and reject that. Now, whoever was behind green lighting the Hanson deal to PSV, you need a pay rise because he has single handedly guided the club to a potential treble on the books. As you can see, they've won both the Euro and the Dutch Cup with ease at Ajax suspense and have made it to a Europa League final. Ibra's regen's first major chance for some silverware and a potential treble. And what better place to do it than the Johan Cruyff Arena winning a European title against Atletico Madrid? Can he conquer the Europa League just like Ibra did with Man United? We're giving it the quick sim, watching it play out. It went down to spot kicks. Hansen converted his. He actually scored the opener in the 24th, followed by Jao Felix one minute later equaliser. But it's heartbreak for PSV, Hansen, and all the fans. We can't let L's like that get to our Alex the Great. It was his cadet event. Things like this are just supposed to happen. You go through peaks and valleys in a career, and that's what he's going to have to learn the hard way as the exciting prospect is now hit 21, and he's grown a juicy plus three. Stats this season were absolutely amazing. In all competitions, it's record numbers for the striker. This kind of production is absolutely insane. 34 goals, 6 assists, 40 goal contributions in all competitions. He's passed the vibe check with an average match rating of 7.66. His development under this complete striker development plan has been effective and efficient to the max. He's shaping up to be an absolute grimace in the front line as his price tag has skyrocketed 27%, hitting 46 million. Season 4 left a bittersweet taste in the mouth, but what we can celebrate is his call up to the national team. Hansen is now representing his nation. He's been given the call. I don't exactly know how to break this news or what to even say because Sweden haven't actually qualified for the 2026 World Cup. Sweden have completely missed the boat. They're sat at home left to watch the tournament on TV. Poor lad, he got sold a dream as we're probably gonna have to wait until the 2028 Euros but for now, season 5 is coming up. We're embarking on a surgical summer again. It's gonna be Alex on the transfer list. We're sending a message there. We're putting him on the open market. He's not happy with his contract anymore. Anyway, he wants a pay rise. He's got to take that next step just for the good of his career. First offer has come through and we aren't wasting any time. Bayern Munich are getting down to business. The Bavarians have bid 88.7. That seems fair game. I'm going to accept that and send him on a mission to Germany. This is where he paves his own route. He's going to go against the grain of Ibra's career path and trajectory. He makes a statement transfer away, says farewell to PSV, and with the click of a button becomes Bayern's market striker option. In real life, in current day, they're linked with Harry Kane, but July 2026, they're looking for a Scandinavian alternative. And here is how he fits into this Bayern Munich puzzle piece. And there is currently an abundance of strike options and, you know, talent he has to compete with off the bat. They have signed so many players and so many strikers. I probably should have looked into this before I accepted the deal, but he'll be linking in up top with Kolo Muani and potentially even Raspadori. Four center forwards, eight strikers, it's typical career mode AI acting up and he's already been approached by Inter. He's literally been at the club for less than a week. And Atletico Madrid, Inter and Roma have already submitted bids for him. We haven't even got him on the transfer list. What is going on? He's training this season. We're going to get him to be a mobile striker. Proving that speed, acceleration, pace, shooting attributes and dribbling. Aspiring to have five-star weak foot, five-star skill moves on lock before the season's over. We've had to adjust a few things, but pretty much here is what he's working working with. From the Europa League final last campaign to a Champions League final in season 5, the presence of one of the most in-demand hitmans in the world right now just delivers results and guarantees them. However, in the Bundesliga, they fell short to Borussia Dortmund and were unable to claim the German title with Hansen and the DFB Pokal. There wasn't any luck domestically, but continentally, they were able to achieve the finals berth as they were eliminated in the quarterfinals to Hamburg. They were also silenced in the Super Cup. Okay, just domestically, Hansen has provided them with some bad luck. And their route to a Champions League final, they topped the group with Juventus, Royal Antwerp and Stad Rene, beating out PSG in the round of 16-4-3 and then taking over Milan at 4-2 on aggregate and then against Liverpool, it was an Anfield masterclass. It was a cult hero, an icon in many regards but winning those kind of trophies a World Cup, a Ballon d'Or, a Champions League, those trophies just solidify you as an all-time baller. Here is how he's lining up at Bayern at with Raspadori in up front. He's strike duo to face Barcelona in the big dance. And we'll watch it out. The biggest game of his career up until this point. The Bavarians edge past the Catalans and it was Raspadori and Muziala with the winning goals after going 
Neil down. But our boy Hanson actually got an 8.0 match rating. So I assume he had a hand in them or were involved in the goals to some extent. Ibra's regen is a European champion. He's got the world at his feet now, having potential to be special. Let's see what kind of numbers he was able to spark up with his first season in Germany. Now boosted up to an 87 rating. He's a crucial first team player in excellent form and in all competitions domestically and over in Europe. 21 goals and 4 assists. With 40 appearances, managed no injuries or suspensions. He actually was the club top goal scorer with less games than Raspadori, which is showcasing something. He's looking sharp in most areas of his game. He's got few skills in the locker and only at 22. His best football is ahead of him. Now, with the biggest boost in market value I have seen so far, a 51% uptick. Seeing his price tag is set to 106.5 million pounds. If Sweden don't qualify for the 2028 Euros, we're going to have a problem. It's a Euros 2028 year, so we're going to keep him at Bayern. I don't want any, any club drama seeping into his national team duties. He's going for a second rodeo at Bayern. He's already improved a plus one with a couple games this season. The 90s look like they're knocking on our door this year, so we're going to put him on the road run. I want to experiment with this development plan and just see what comes of it. Unfortunately, we weren't able to speak a Golden Ball nomination into existence here in 2027, but we're also living in a world where Darwin Nunes can be nominated in the top four. However, Vlahovic, Haaland and Mbappe are the benchmark. That's just a taste of some of the competitions Zlatan's region has to face if he wants to take this home. Bayern have no holds barred. They are fully in the realm of protecting their Champions League title. With Hansen guiding them to another Champions League final, they topped the group, fully progressed out of that stage and in the round of 16, dealt the damage and our boy has a chance to go back to back. But let's just take a look domestically and in other competitions, how everything panned out and this one actually stings. The Bundesliga title just remains out of their grasp as Leverkusen beat them to the punch by one point. This time though, the DFB Pokalo was secured and we live in a world where Houston Dynamo won the FIFA Club World Cup. Nebra's Regen was actually involved in this. They were the ones who lost to the eventual champions, the Americans, knocking them out on penalties. How? And here's yet another trophy to add to the cabinet. It's the UEFA Super Cup. Champions League winners versus Europa League winners and we beat out Tottenham 2-1. Tottenham is the history of the Tottenham. But I've checked the Euro 2028 groups and you've guessed it again. Sweden have just completely not even qualified. Unfortunately, FIFA doesn't have the updated Euros format. It's just four groups, four teams, so there was even less of a chance for them to qualify. But that's why we're going to play out tonight's big dance, give the lad the captain's armband, he's on penalties duties, and his instructions on the pitch are to stay central, get him behind the conservative interceptions, and just stay forward. On a club level, life couldn't be better. He's winning trophies, Latan's regen is definitely living up to the name. It's just on the international scene, I feel sorry for the lad. Sweden, you got to step up your game. Forget about the meatballs, Italians do it better anyway. Oh no, oh no, this is trouble. Vitinha with the power shots, and it's 1-0 already. PSG take the lead. Not the ideal way we wanted to start off tonight's fixture, but it is what it is. And Hansen will flick it past his defender. Tried to use the finesse shot. Uziala again. Needs something special and has it in the locker, but this time at Donnarumma read the shot. We're knocking on the door. But it finds its way on the edge of the area and Donnarumma has to parry it away. How many chances does the man need? That's it, Ballon d'Or winner Mbappe. He's been sent for an early ice bath. Here we go, the equaliser. If not now, then when? Muziala to find Hansen. That was the moment, that was the chance, but it took a bubble and flew over the crossbar. And with this 10-man PSG squad, they can't contain the Swedish Viking. And again, finally finds the back of the net. It's been coming for about half an hour. Finds number 29 delivers. You are watching a master at work. Zlatan's regen, he's a big game. Player headphones on and all. PSG now entering the box looking for the second, and that's exactly what they get straight away. They've responded, and Frankie de Jong this time catches our entire back line off guard. The 10 men Parisians against all the odds take the lead again. Hansen is there for the run. The PSG defense push forward. I think he's on side. The sweet now one on one with a cheeky chip, and he missed time that completely. It just wasn't meant to be. Like Sweden not qualifying for any international tournament. PSG are the bane of our 
our existence in these Champions League finals. Whenever I play them, PSG just inevitably win, like, all the time. It's like I've got a curse for them. Ever since I rebuilt them on the channel, they've just been haunting me ever since. At least Ibra's regen, he's experienced it all. The highs of lifting the Holy Grail and the lows. He's got to soak it in. He's got to remember this feeling to fuel him in the future and get revenge. Now we're going to take a more in-depth look, touch base with the lads, see how he's knocking around as he has now hit 90 overall, a back-to-back -back season, a plus three growth. He's established himself as one of the world's best. He's the real deal. He's now hit Ibra's prime rating back on FIFA 17, I believe it was. He's also producing Ballon d'Or-esque numbers with 39 goals and four assists, 43 goal contributions and 55 appearances in all competitions, including the FIFA Club World Cup. It could be time for a move away though. This summer, he won't be at the World Cup or the Euros, so he's just got some time off to recollect and reflect on his game. The mobile strike plan has pretty much got him 99 pace. And financially, he is up there, now valued at 149 million pounds, and he is clear. The only European player in the starting 11 not to be called up to the national team or just not out on international duty at the moment. Him and Kobo, they're busy knocking back a few beers at the bar this summer. I can put it out there with full confidence that this kid has a offer from the Premier League or La Liga on the horizon soon, so we're putting him back up on the market. His contract expires actually in 12 months. Go get your bag, mate. As long as it's not in Saudi Arabia, I'm all for it. I'm just going to continue to experiment with training and put him on that target man development plan just to make him the most well-rounded, best striker in the game. I think only a few clubs in the world can actually afford the guy and, okay, Spurs have come in on a technicality because they've offered up a swap deal. Do I want him going to North London and winning no silverware? No, that's not on my watch, so I'm probably going to reject this one for now. I'm not going to subject him to a life and career of torture. Look who has come knocking. It's Milan, a club that Zlatan is a certified legend at. At least you know, 176.4 million pounds is the kind of range a club has to pay. I want Premier League or La Liga, so for now, I'm just going to leave that one to stall. Atletico Madrid, 45 million. How have they gone away with this one? Okay, they've included Joel Felix in the deal with a player plus cash approach. I think we can do a Spanish detour. I'm going to accept that. They're sacrificing one of their best attacking talents in order to lure Hansen to the Spanish capital. So with Letty Ibra's regen, here we go. It's a prime 89 rated Joel Felix headed the other way. He swaps Spain for Germany and most importantly, Alexander Hansen will now be balling out at the Wanda Metropolitano as the swap deal goes through 45.7 million pounds plus the Portuguese center forward and the consequences of the deal. Okay, sometimes this happens. I don't know why. It's happened in so many of our career sims, but Hansen has gone from a 90 to a 95, just like that. He's just experienced a plus five improvement. I think it's a glitch in career mode. When players transfer to a new team, sometimes their the overalls just get glitched. And now all of a sudden, Atletico's new number 10 has a 215 million pound market value. In any case, he's actually surpassed Ibra's career when it comes to rating at 24, which is quite the achievement. This is the kind of team Alex the Great is inheriting. He slots so nicely, a major upgrade on Enya Siri to partner up top with Yusofa Mukoko. Now that is a filthy strike duo for the history books. Also, we've awarded him with the captain's armbands for all in the space of one season. It's just a one season wonder. They've only bought him on a one season contract and the club have installed a 397 million pound release clause. Probably the best striker in the world right now. He is still nowhere to be seen in this Swedish first team 11 with Isaac and Gujorkeres being the first two options. I feel like Thanos right now. Fine, I'll do it myself. This Swedish golden generation mixed with Zlatan's regen actually have the opportunity to do something extraordinary. Now I'm out here looking like Bobo the Fool thinking that our king had a chance to be nominated for the Ballon d'Or in the top four. You know, it's wild. Darwin Nunes, Gakpo, Florian Verts, I can understand. Maybe even Leo. After all those goals, all those trophies last season here in season seven he gets his cap broken. The reincarnation of Zlatan himself has spent his seventh campaign going zero for three. Coming through third in the league, losing the Copa del Rey final to Real Sociedad 2-1. And there wasn't even any Champions League football or just European football for that matter to be a part of. Spurs get the last laugh in this situation, but how did he do on an individual level? His contract is actually running out. It's expiring. No club in the world is going to pay that release clause and he could be doomed to the free agency. Even with that plus five overall glitch, he is upgraded. Plus one 
Milan now standing at a 96. This has actually been his worst season to date. Yes, yeah, Spain, it just hasn't clicked for him here at Atleti. He played more than Makoko, but only found the back of the net 20 times with five assists. He scored a 7.30 across those domestic competitions. And the Spaniards didn't make the most of him when they signed him up on a one-year contract. It'll just be a farce if he can't find a new team. Like, just classic career mode. But let's see what unfolds. A season eight, a World Cup year is among us. I can't believe my eyes, but we're doing it for the plot. He's back where it all started when this video kicked off in the free agency. Here he is, Hansen. He is back being unemployed and looking for a new club. Just make it make sense because it's been eight years since he spawned into this career mode save and he is back where it all began. There are so many storylines and controversial talking points from this transfer, but pretty much the only club that could have afforded him on 450k a week, Man City came swooping in. Pep wants to win every single trophy in existence before City get found out for their financial fair play mishaps. He's going ahead, joining Premier League champions, as you can tell by the golden patches on the sleeve. Ibra came to the Premier League for the Red Devils. His regen, on the other hand, he's doing his own thing. He's going his own route. And an elite front three of Phil Foden, Ferran Torres, and other world-class options littered all over the starting 11. And on the bench, this squad is built for success. Let's see if one of the world's best can light up the Premier League like we predicted. It's time for that Ballon d'Or top four nominations list to be revealed. And we see a lot of Man City shirts, but it's not the player we want. Someone's forgotten to turn on the lights as it's Phil Ferdinand, Ferran Torres, Haaland, and Ansu Fati all up for the prize. Haaland, after half a year of inactivity, is still capable to win the golden ball. Maybe he just has that Zlatan curse on him where he can't win the Ballon d'Or. It's just impossible. What does the regen even have to do to be considered for the accolade? It's a World Cup year and Ibra the Seconds first into the Premier League sees him become a champion with one of the lowest points tallies of all time, 76 points. I don't know how that's even possible, but it was a tight four horse race up until the final few days. The Citizens win their 400th Premier League title thanks to the Swede and they go ahead victorious in the Community Shield to launch the season 3-2 against Leicester. It was so close to being a domestic treble as they were knocked out early on in round five of the FA Cup. Newcastle saw their demise there, but the Carabao, okay, I guess you can claim that as a domestic treble. A 3-2 win against Leeds United in the big dance at Wembley. It's proven to be a walk in the park for Hansen at City and it's a match made in heaven as he's made it for a 4-0 win versus Roma in the UEFA Super Cup. As Bayern Munich, his former outfit, knocked him out in the round of 16, getting a bit of revenge. A 4-2 aggregate loss. Before we delve into the madness of the World Cup, we're going to take an individual look at him to see how he performed and how he became a top dog in the Premier League. Did he win the golden boot? And that's a stupid question. Of course he won that race. I don't think I'm fully aware of who I'm really dealing with right here. 27 goals in 38 matches. Still couldn't beat Haaland's record in real life, but it is what it is. In 57 appearances, he managed 42 goals and 7 assists. He's just a goal-getting specialist. And the Scandinavian hitman with 49 goal contributions, an average match rating of 7.61. This kind of growth is going to take him to be a maxed out rating before we know it. And he's maxed out attributes. Some just include strength, sprint speed, reactions, acceleration, attack positioning. The list goes on and on. He has now earned himself a market value of 238.5 million pounds. Ibra wishes. He's looking on like a proud father in retirement. Now he can shift gears towards the national team as he is now in this five-star Sweden outfit. 85 attack, 82 midfield, and 83 defense. I'm touting them as tournament dark horses. They've been drawn into Group G alongside my two nations, Italy, Australia, and Poland. It's a complicated draw, which is going to get tough. Group F over there looks feisty. The Swedes want to make a statement on the international stage, and they have all the components to make a deep run. Just take a look at this team. Kulusevski and Bardi on the flanks look absolutely deadly. Brighton boy Ayeri is going to be a classic box-to-box -box playmaker. Some solid options in and off the bench, and this deadly combo in up top. We're just going to score goals for fun. I can already see it happening. Can he be a hero and carry a nation on? On his back? Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's get simming. Viva la Sweden, baby. What has gone down in Group C is that they've topped it. Seven points undefeated, two wins, and a draw. They've solidified their status in the round of 16 where they went to town on Belgium with a 4-1 demolition job to see them through to the quarterfinals where they beat out two-time winners France and edge past 2-1 to find themselves in a semi-final versus Spain.
Spain. This was too big of a moment to pass up. We want to watch it play out in the visual sim. Can Ebra's regen gift his nation a World Cup final berth for the first time in their history? Those are the two starting teams. Spain looking pretty strong. You never know with the dark horses. They could be up to something. The Swedes are beating the possession kings at their own game. Here we go. Here we go. Sweden's in here. It's going to be Alexander Isak. He's partnering crime up top to get the opener and get them ahead 1-0 at the break. What a time. Oh, spraying of equalized there. Gavi with a quick response five minutes after the interval. And Hansen's currently dropping a mid-game. Only a 6.4 rating below par. Can he get them the goal? Oh, he's going to get the assist. And that's an instant reply if I've ever seen it to get them back into the lead. It's an Isak double. Surely they can hold on. And no, it's going to be Gavi again. This guy just refuses to go away. Oh, no. How? I could have bottled this, you know. I'm just going to quick sim this one. I'm going to get it out of the way and see if they can pull off a miracle. And Alexander Isaac, when his nation needed him most, was Alex just having a day off? He was having a tough day at the office. He didn't contribute whatsoever. It's an Alexander Isaac quadruple. A 98th minute winner in extra time to book Sweden's spot into the big dance. Hansen actually got an 8.3 average match rating, so I assume he at least got an assist. And destiny awaits our regenerated demigod in the FIFA World Cup final of 2030. He's got the game day playlist blasting in his ears. They're like a fish out of water in this scenario. The underdog, the dark horse. They've had a run to the final that any nation would be proud of. And the fans are turning up in droves to see not only that man bag him in, but the whole team achieve world domination. Oh, this fixture, it's also bringing back the vibes and the memories of the 2018 World Cup where they played each other in the groups. That Tony Cruz last minute free kick. If he takes this one home tonight, he is definitely going to be the red hot favorite for the Ballon d'Or. Here goes nothing. We're not joking another final. And in defense, we are struggling at the moment. Germany's pressure is formidable and it's verts to Mokoko. What a save from the man in between the sticks. And we go again. They're attempting everything. They're throwing everything at us. And Wallstelt manages to deny Germany of the opener time and time again. In the opening 10 minutes, we have a counter attack to respond to. Hansen's going to use his 99 pace to breeze past the German defense. He sees Isaac on the inside and he does the team thing to get Sweden the lead in the 13th minute. It's Alexander Isaac, who is currently the top leading goal scorer at this World Cup tournament. But that was a perfectly timed, precise chip cross. Quite a dramatic finish from the Newcastle forward. Doesn't matter how you score them, though. It's an assist for Ebra's regen to get Sweden 1-0 to the good. That's a nice ball inside to Isaac, who wants his... Sixth goal in two games, but Hansen was there. All he needed to do was continue the run. And the Swedish 99 sneaks up behind the German defense like a librarian. So it was a pretty routine finish in the end. All he had to do was tap it home. They've bursted out the blocks and risen to the occasion in the opening 25 minutes, 2-0. Germany aren't backing down, though. They're never given up. And it's Adeyemi to find Makoko on the inside. We've brought out the keeper, and that's the worst thing we could have done as they half the deficit. And they're not going to go down. Down easy. They're not going to go down without a fight. Oh, Adeyemi again. That's two. Just like that. You can never be too comfortable in a game. Nevertheless, a World Cup final. Talk about precision. Perfect placement. Two keepers wouldn't have been able to save that. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't pull up the play. I think that's going to be a red card, but it's a third for Germany. A hat trick for Adeyemi in 35 minutes from 2 0 up to 3 2 down in the space of 10 minutes. This has been a dramatic downfall that needs to be studied, but thankfully the game's not over yet. And Hansen, this 99 pace is absolutely lethal. He wants to find Isaac again. He's being a playmaker, trequartista forward. He's in his assist bag tonight. It's like Batman and Robin out there. And that's a headed master piece for an equalizer to make it 3-3. And how many goals is that for Alexander? It's nine in seven matches. He is a World Cup freak. That is probably the most hectic final of any competition I've ever taken part in. 3-3 going into the break. We've got to be careful, but Germany, look how they're pressing. They want all the smoke and they want the fourth. And now Isaac with the chance for a perfect floating ball to return the favor to Hanson. That's a poor first touch. The keeper didn't come out. And the audacity from this man to pull off something that extreme. 
extraordinary. It's Ibra-esque. And would we expect anything else from Alex the Great? Two Alexes are just running the show at the moment. I haven't seen a German humiliated like that since World War II. Kuluzevsky cuts inside and this could be another opportunity. Their keepers come out. It's Izak for another header and that's his 10th goal of the tournament. This Swedish attack is on fire and Germany have no answer. We've taken another two goal lead. He's just like Mbappe and Messi for real. A hat trick in a World Cup final for the mad lad. Kuluzevsky, look at the way we're spreading the ball across. There's just so much green grass to work with and now it's Hansen to finish it off again. It's a hat trick for both the strikers. And what better time to whip out the most iconic World Cup celebrations of all time. Paying homage to South Africa 2010. And these two have been the architects of Germany's downfall. It's just what winners do. He's got ice running through his veins with these kind of finishes. Now Germany with the last few attempts. We've got Hein on a yellow card. We didn't want to risk it with the tackle. And four minutes left. Karamadiemi has gifted his nation a chance back into the game. But he's off celebrating. Pick the ball out of the net, my guy. Joke's on you, mate. You're losing a World Cup final with two minutes to go. 10 goal thriller. I never thought I'd see the day. I never thought I'd be muttering those words. And the referee puts Germany out of their misery and Sweden in 2030 are you World Cup champions. Hansen has gone on to achieve what Ibra couldn't. And past legends before him could only dream of this type of moment. I'm ecstatic because they've won but I'm sad because it's the end of the Isaac Hansen show at the World Cup. It's gonna be that man to lift up the trophy and some iconic scenes are about to go down. Does that make him one of the all-time greats and better than Ebra? Let me know down in the comments below. It'll do wonders for his Ballon d'Or credentials, but I don't know. There never can be another like Zlatan, you know. He was just one of a kind, a generational talent as the celebrations go down. The Scandinavians, like Imagine Dragons, are living on top of the world. It was actually a tighter race than I thought to be the Golden Boot winner. Hansen coming through second with nine as Isaac had ten in seven matches. Crazy numbers as Adiemi came through third with seven and Hansen won the assist race with six assists and five assists for Isaac respectively. We need an award ceremony for these living legends for the Swedish national team right now and there's your final look at Hansen's World Cup. The numbers speak for themselves. Nine goals, six assists, 15 goal contributions and just imagine how many more trophies he could have won for Sweden if they actually qualified for the 2026 World Cup and 2028 Euros. I'm still flabbergasted with what this man has been able to achieve. He's got that dog in him all right. And now let's see if that'll reflect at the Ballon d'Or ceremony. In season nine of his professional career, it's now or never. You know the rules. Wherever he goes, wherever he plays, wherever he is, the headphones don't come off even in the press conference room. I doubt he can hear any of the questions he's been asked as Hansen's also won the player of the tournament over his act. The dust from their World Cup triumph has settled and the Ballon d'Or top four have been revealed. Here he is. It's his debut. It's his first time even being up for the award. Hansen's in the mix alongside Mbappe, Vinicius Jr. and his teammate Phil Foden. It would be such a fitting conclusion for us to end on a high and take home a Ballon d'Or. And the golden ball is in the Swedes' hands. He's completed that golden trio of a Champions League, a World Cup. And the last one he had to tick off the list. He's gone and done it at the age of 26. One of the world's best, 97 overall. He's just completed life. Completed his career in his peak at 20 six operating at peak performance with this man city squad i can't believe i haven't really experimented much with regens this year in fifa 23 career mode it's taken me this long but i didn't realize they were this overpowered it's been a roller coaster ride and let me know down in the comments below if you like these types of career simulations do you want to see more regen content on the channel something that i haven't really dappled in all too much this season i have though in the past and they banged like the regen rebuild and stuff like that but let me know your thoughts down below on alexander hansen's career did he do Ebra justice. What was your favorite moments? Let me know who's next down in the comments below. Follow all my social links if you want to stay up to date and keep up to date with everything. Hit a like, hit subscribe if you've made it this far. As always, I've been Sir BCHD. Have a great day and I'll catch you lot on the very next video.